Hi, Bruce from Safari, and this is our first sodium ion project. It's going in a transporter T6. It's going to be stacked in vertically, so this board's lying flat, but just imagine it's standing up and it's sliding into a cupboard vertically. Uh, under the new regulations, these sodium batteries can go inside the vehicle and inside the compartment. Now, contrary to what you might read from other sources, you cannot put lithium batteries in this scenario. You can't put them under a bed and seal it. The regulation, the rule number one on the regulation says that it must be externally accessible. Uh, the lithium battery must be. And secondly, that it must be sealed off from the interior. But you can't put a lithium battery under a bed and seal it and say that that's acceptable. It will be totally illegal. It has to have an external hatch that it slides through, but not with these sodiums. So this is going to be perfectly safe in the transporter. There's no chance of any thermal runaway. Um, the capacity on these is 100 amp hours each. So we've got two together, 200 amp hours. But what's a bit different on the lithium is the voltage. Now, right now we're charging and then I'm going to do the demo and I'm going to put the induction on in a minute. And you can see here we're charging around 58, 59 amps. The voltage is getting up, we're at 91%. It'll go all the way up to 15.9. The Orion charger we've got up here, which is the alternator DC to DC is a 30 amp. But uh, next month we'll load onto this board the new Orion XS, which is a 50 amp buck boost. It's got no um, fins at the back. I've just handled it over in the Netherlands and it's a uh, much smaller size than this. It's a lot more efficient. So these only run really in the 80% range, but the new one will be 98.5% efficient. This small Orion here has an input voltage range of eight to 17, which is coming out of these batteries here, and then it outputs at 13 volts. So even though the sodium ion battery's got a big voltage range, uh, we're using this device, uh, run it out at a consistent 13 volts for the fridge and the lights, no, no flickering around. And this is 89% efficient, very efficient, this small one here. And then we've got the solar charger here, which will fully charge this up to the 15.9. The inverter charger will uh, fully charge it up to the 15.9. And the smart battery protect that we have on here is actually set on the input side feeding through to this device so once these batteries get low it's going to turn off the uh, 12 volt side and that's all working fine so now i'm going to go into discharge mode so we're charging it with the induction on and uh, we're running at 130 135 amps 14 volts pretty close to 2000 there's the cooktop you can see it's Look at that, it's starting to bubble already. Talk about fast. And that, so that's sitting at about 1800 watts at the moment. And what we're going to do here is a bit of a test. We've got no alarm, is I'm going to wind this up to the max. And at the max, this at the inverter end is going to be way over. Look at this, 190 amps, 13 volts. It's probably about 24, 2500 watts. Now, Victron will go 30% over its rating for 30 minutes, and the alarm here is flashing. When it goes solid, then it'll actually turn off, but it'll actually do three over current conditions of 30 minutes, uh, and it'll auto reset. So we've got absolutely no problem there whatsoever, um, but that current is really well and truly uh, pumping out. That single induction, full load, and this 2000 VA Victron Multi Plus um, uh, will work together perfectly without any trouble at all. That's 195 amps. You can see there is a peak. So as the voltage drops, the current goes up. Um, these two batteries here comfortably running the 2000 inverter here. And I've got to say, how good's that?